Hello, and welcome to System Center Central. You can check out our website at mynexttech.com. So today we're going to be talking about SSRS reporting, a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create an SSRS report and how to create that subscription. You know those managers always wanting those reports every day. What's the status on this? What's the status on that? Well, today we're going to automate that report for them. So stay tuned, and thanks for joining us today. Hello, and welcome back. So now we're going to talk about SSRS reporting and how you can automate these reports so that you can send someone a weekly report without having to redo this report over and over, over again. So with that being said, I have a query here that I created, uh, and I have this query on my website. So if you want to go to my website, it's called mynextech.com. It's M-Y-N-E-X-T-E-C-H.com. I'll put a link down below for you to click on. Uh, so this this query I got from my website. I created this query before. Now since Microsoft is changing their licensing and wanting the number of cores, so licenses are based on the number of cores. So I created a query to uh, capture that information, and I wanted it to be a weekly report for management so that they can uh, you know take a look at the the you know as machines check in and. It runs this report, they run their hardware inventory and stuff like that, and it gets, becomes, uh, once these machines become, um, you know, servers become a, um, an SSM client, they will then run this hardware queer, uh, uh, scan, and they will then, uh, I can then create a report based on that to determine uh, the number of cores. So I have a query here. Um, so let's, let's get the, uh, right, so with that being said, uh, now that we have, no, I have this query here and I, now what I like to do is I like to run these queries first to make sure that it works. Uh, and I like to make these reports query based or SQL based, if you will. So I have a query here that's going to capture the, um, the number of cores, you know, so basically it's going to get the system name, the manufacturer, the name of the CPU, the number of CPUs, number of cores and the logical CPU account. Now you can do this using um, PowerShell where you can actually run this report and actually, but this way, this is all automated. So when you use SCTM, you're automating a lot of this. So now I have a, um, a query that works. I like the format, I like what I have here. Um, you can always add different things in here if you want to, but here's just a simple query that pulls um, basically logical cores, number of cores, and what have you. So now with that being said, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, launch our SCSIM Center console. Takes a moment. All right, so now what you want to do uh, to create this report, you want to go to monitoring, reporting, and then you want to um, click on reports. Now we're going to create a report. So we're going to create this report. So we're going to cl click on create report. Now we're going to give this report a name. So we're going to say uh, CPU count. And then we're going to uh, go ahead and place this under, let's just say, since it's hardware, I'm going to call it uh, hardware processor. Cause that's it's kind of a hard report uh, so I'm going to add it there now you can create a new folder called custom reports if you want to I'm just going to dump it here it's just, just a lab environment so I'm just going to put it in hardware processor so click there so it's going to be called CPU count go next and next now this will bring up the report builder uh, in just a moment here so it's, um, this will bring that up all right so as soon as you close it'll actually bring up this report builder and here we go. So you have to log in. Now I don't recommend doing all of this uh, on your admin account, but you'll have an account that has administrative rights and SCCM to create reports. Take a second. Again, this is a virtual machine, so sometimes it will take a second to load. I'm going to pause the video for a second, and we'll, I'll come back when it loads. Okay, we're back. It's loaded. So now we're going to go ahead and create a table and query. So we're going to go ahead and click on the uh, data set. Uh, you can create, actually, we can create a data set if we want to, but choose an existing data set report. Uh, um, 
Uh, let's go ahead and create a new one for this. So we're gonna create a new data set. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and test this connection, make sure that uh, it's working. Yep, okay, great. Uh, so now we're gonna go ahead and get, uh, use the current logged in. All right, so now we're going to um, edit, and then you're gonna put in your, your query in here. Now you're gonna run this query and see now it works. Okay, great. So now we, we put in edits and then you put, put in your query in here and it gives you results. Okay, we like the results, it's working. Now in here, you can kind of change the roles if you want to um, when you get in here. So you wanna select everything here and drag it to value and then go next. Uh, we're gonna, you know, you can change your, if you wanna do it, we're just gonna do expand, whatever. We're gonna use the default for this. And here you can change the style that you want, you know, however you want it. I kind of like this one, so I'm going to pick this one and click finish. And then I'm going to move this up to the top, otherwise you'll have that space at the top when you run your reports. And then when you click on run, sometimes it works in here when you run it, so you can see what the report looks like. Uh, sometimes, you know, it may take a few minutes to, you know, to kind of show the preview of what that report looks like. So you can, this is where you can start to change out the layout. Uh, you know, if you want to change, you know, the, the, the font or the, the print layout or what have you. And as you can see, this looks, this looks fairly fine. So, okay, so I like this. So I'm going to go ahead and save this report. And there you go. And so now I'm going to go ahead and go down to um, hardware and put it in processor. And there's my CPU count report. So if I right click on it, run. And there's my report. And now it just runs quickly. Now I know a lot of people say SHM reporting is slow and you know, but if you run, if you create these reports using SQL query, it won't be slow, it'll be fast just like this. Uh, just as if I ran it on the SQL. And so here it is, here's my little report. Now again, you can easily go back in here and make some changes if you want to. Um, you can actually go in here and export it into an Excel spreadsheet so I can send it off to somebody or I can make it as a PDF or Word or TIFF file so I can, you know, I can export this report uh, uh, and send it to someone who doesn't have access to SCCM to run these reports. Um, so I'll, sometimes we'll just, ex, you know, export it out. Now here I wanted to, um, I've been asked to create a, you know, they want this report weekly. So instead of coming in here and right clicking, running this report, right clicking on this here and doing Excel and then saving it every time and then sending it to them in email, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a subscription. So what I'm gonna do is right click on here and it says right here, it says create subscription. So I'm gonna do that. So here I'm gonna go, that's fine. Um, you can do file name called CPU count report. Um, now we wanna do email. Oh, we wanna do Excel, but that's the kind of report that we want to, just to send it off to. Uh, so, um, because I don't have Exchange in my environment, so I'm just gonna do a file share. So I'm gonna give it a path. Um, let's see where I can put it. Um, let me see if there's a share somewhere. Um, let's put it under apps. There we go, that works. And username, I'm going to put in my username. And <clears throat> I'm going to run, uh, put my password in there. And I'm going to confirm that password. Uh, yep, we're going to override it each time there's a newer version. Uh, you don't have to if you don't want to. So there's your options. I'm just going to say override. Now, because uh, normally you can say deliver, just sometimes you'll have a... Um, Uh, you'll have an option when you uh, drill down, it says email. I don't have that option because I don't have exchange in my environment. So, but you would just select that and then you go and then everything else, you put their email address that you want to send it to and it would be different here. I'm just going to do um, file share for now just to kind of, and then here's where you can put your schedule. You can do daily, you can do weekly. So I'm going to do weekly. I'm going to do Monday. Um, I'll repeat uh, maybe like maybe uh, once a week or whatever. Uh, maybe I'll do it once. We can do, a, and they can, you can, you can give them that report in a specific time. So we're gonna do. Well, let's do one thirty. Uh, you can start on this date. You can stop on this date. Uh, especially like if a project's over and we we have everything we need. So you can. There's actually an end date if you wanted to do that. You would just click on stop on, and then you put that end date you want it to be. So 
So here I'm not going to do that. It's going to be weekly every Monday. Here's your CPU reports uh, count. And that's basically it. So uh, normally I would have selected email instead of file share. So now when I uh, run this report, uh, it'll actually, you know, create that, um, that report would be, let me see if it's on the file share. Uh, it's not on there yet. So, um, Okay, so when you run this report, now that I've created that subscription, normally it would be automatically sent to someone's email every week. So you don't even have to do anything after this. Um, you don't even have to run it. It will just kind of run it on its own in the background. Uh, so, and I told it that I wanted to run at 1.30 today. So it'll actually run this report and dump it in that file share. Now, if I manually run this, it'll actually go to, like if I wanted to export this for whatever, if I wanted to run something now, it'll actually automatically take me to that location. And I just click on save and it'll take me there. Now it's already existed because I ran that report already. Um, now I've already told the system to override it anyway. So it's gonna do this on the back end, uh, you know, on its own automatically. So I never have to run this report again. Now the only thing that I'll have to do occasionally, if I need to modify this report or edit this report or make any changes to this report, I can simply just go in here and do edits I can edit this report and make those changes. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel. Um, I'll link my mynexttech.com. This report, uh, there's a guide on how to do this in my, at my, in my website called mynexttech.com. So I'll put that link below. Again, thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Thanks, bye-bye.